Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to take apart our first engine dyno mule engine. This engine was used in 2015 when we were developing some stuff with uh, Manly Performance on making a stronger 2JZ piston. And they had a range of situation where we would go over and use the Scranton Brothers engine dyno. And all I needed to do was build an engine and show up and they were gonna do the rest of the work. So it ended up being a really, really neat experience. My first time being on an engine dyno. Our goal was to make 1600 horsepower and we ended up making over 1800 with it and left with a running engine. But when the engine came back, we took the cylinder head off and put it back into circulation on the race cars and just the short block sat in the corner of the shop all this time. And we were talking about it the other day. We said, well, wonder what it looks like inside. So we're gonna take it apart, point out what's going good, point out what's going bad, and share it with you. So taking this engine apart was a pretty fun experience because I remembered the engine block. It was an engine block that we had used in Geo Silver Supra because I'd blown the rear freeze plug out of it at the Texas Invitational years ago. And I had welded the freeze plug back in and put the block back into service. So it was a really basic engine. It was a 40 over 2JZ stock crank, manly turbo tough, manly piston, ACL bearings. It was before we were making our own main caps. So taking it apart, brought back the memory of having to fit the thrust bearing clearance because those caps weren't cut really well and the parting line was thick and it was just a time inconvenience more than anything, but it's just one of the many parts that had evolved over time. So looking over the bearings, none of them looked great, but you had an engine that had made a tremendous amount of horsepower with a relatively small amount of oil in it because the stock 2JZ wet sump system was less than six quarts. So when you're running that high RPM over a long time, the oil just gets worked relatively quickly in your, you know, 9,000 RPM with a stock oil pump. It's just kind of a mess. But surprisingly, the crank looked good. The crank wasn't bent. I checked the run out on it. It was still less than a thou, which for a crankshaft that's long, like the 2JZ crankshaft, they do tend to bend easily. I've had core engines that came in that were really nice looking engines that the crank was already bent in. Taking the pistons and rods apart, it was evident that the pin bores were pretty worked. And basically at that power level, using a shelf hardened pin was just irresponsible. And I should have been using a higher level pin. And I feel that's necessary once you get over, you know, 14, 1500 horsepower, it's just worth upgrading. The main saddles in this block look pretty terrible, lots of fretting, but keep in mind the engine had been used a lot. So it was an engine that Gio and I had played with. It was um, before we'd gone to that 625 main stud. So it was just a lot of learning had happened with this block. The head gasket surface looked fine. There was nothing going on there. Nothing to be concerned about. No moving the gasket. Uh, this is the worst rod bearing. But keep in mind, this, this engine really should have had a dry sump. I should not have been running the engine this hard with this much RPM without a dry sump. Since it's been five years, it's worth looking at what's changed in that amount of time. And this is the classic turbo tough versus the new tri-beam. So the turbo tough rod has always been a staple go-to I-beam really really hard part to tear up but they went ahead and updated it you know it's over five years ago so these parts have evolved same with the pistons quite a bit different design i would like to think that the efforts that were shared between manly and real street help evolve these parts one of the neat things about working with these good manufacturers is they actually take feedback serious they want to build better components for us to use and that's some of the spoils of the technology and healthy market we're in so it is neat to work with companies that are willing to take the feedback and, and help build really, really killer parts for us to make a lot of power with. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If nothing else, it's a good testament to how awesome the Toyota 2JZ engine is. Despite its age, it still presents itself as a rival to engines that are both larger and more complex. I look forward to continuing to develop parts for this engine moving forward. And I'd like to thank Manly Performance and the Scranton Brothers for giving me this great memory. The sound of this engine on the dyno was really, really spectacular. If you have any questions about your 2JZ engine or any other engine for that matter, feel free to reach out.